great green.
not sure if you were alive in 1979 when your uh, grandfather won the IROC title, but uh, <laughs> um, what would it mean to you to win uh, the SRX Series title here in 2022 amongst all these literal superstars? Yeah, I think what, what would mean more to me than uh, maybe if a cup guy won it is because I'm going against cup guys. And it seems like more of their sandbox, you know, but uh, I've really taken a liking to it and, um, you know, like especially the dirt. I mean, I'm, I'm just smiling ear to ear. So um, to be able to do it in their sandbox would be special. Have you surprised yourself how good you run? I mean, let's face it, like you say, you're running great on dirt. You got three second places in a row. The only reason I'll say no is because I, I welcome low grip scenarios uh, in any type of formula that I've ever run. So, um, you know, I think when it's when it's in our hands and there's not a lot of uh, outside things that can make or break your race, I bet on myself. Now, you mentioned race against cup guys. Are you maybe looking ahead to that a little bit? Are you still satisfied there's, with what you're doing? There's some stuff or? in the works. There's definitely some stuff in the works. Okay, we got a scoop here. So here you go. <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, thanks for talking about us. What drew me there was um, I watched it all year last year while I was traveling with the Cup Series, and every time I'd eat dinner, I'd go back to my hotel, and I'd watch SRX. Had no idea it ever worked for him someday, but December 23rd, I get a text message from the ownership group of SRX saying, would I be interested in signing an NDA with them? And I'm like, yeah. Why? I mean, you got Tony Stewart, you got George Pine, you got Sandy Montag, Ray Everham. Why wouldn't you sign an NDA with them? And um, I sent it back. And four minutes later, I got a request for a Zoom meeting. So the rest is history, they would say. If you had to give a state of the series address, like a you know, like a politician would do, uh, what would that be at this point in time? I would say the um, so far, we've had a, a great 2022 season. Some people predicted a sophomore slump, uh, sophomore jinx. Um, if this is a jinx and this is a slump, I'll take it. Um, we had a blast. We had some rough weeks. We had some. But we had consistent ratings, um, we had great drivers, 23 great drivers, we got outstanding crew, everybody busted their tail to work on these race cars. We had great sponsors, Camping World stepped in, they did their part, a bunch of other companies then jumped in after. Uh, CBS has done a great job on television, so it's made it a blast. I've been in motorsports almost 40 years in the media side and covered all sorts of motorsports, and I've got to say that this is one of the more laid back uh, series that I've been around, all the way from the track security to folks like yourself, uh, what do you guys attribute that to? We got the best drivers in the world at some of the best short tracks in the country, and what happens then is they just come back to where they started mentally, and I believe it affects emotionally, stress-wise. They're at ease. They're walking around signing autographs. It's just, and like after the drivers meeting, so many people walked up and wanted them to sign stuff. Nobody said, "Get away. We're not done. We're le we're going to our motor coach. We're at a short track." We want short track racing to do really well. We want the track promoter to do really well. And these guys, they're paying it forward. They're giving it back. And that's what excites me about working with these guys. Tony even extended the autograph series at South Boston when I was there. I mean, at what, 90 some degree heat, no breeze. 98 degrees and he put the guild on everybody and said, I'm staying here and you can't start without me. So who start wants to join me? me? Right. And three guys were smart enough to stay with him. If you can't share anything, what are you guys looking forward to for next year? The ownership group's already started talking with CBS about a week and a half ago. I have several sponsors we talked about, about 23 and beyond. So the question is, how soon we get that done? Instead of going home and mothballing the cars for four or five months, we're going to go home and go to work uh, after a good break. It's a well-deserved break. So we're going to give the guys some time off and the gals some time off. They did a heck of a job this year. And on the personal side, you're still going to be here for 2023? They haven't formally invited me yet, but like <laughs> they kind of allude to that. So why don't you ask them? I don't know. You'll have to answer the text, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the Here with Ryan Newman, and uh, you know, they say men are not supposed to cry, but uh, I think around the world when. Uh, you pull up at Stafford and your girls joined you in uh, victory lane there on the front stretch. You had everybody watching, uh, bawling their eyes out. Uh, looking back now, uh, a couple weeks removed, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it was special in so many ways, um, mostly to have my daughters there, mostly uh, to be alive to have my daughters there, and, and um, you know, all the thoughts and prayers and everything else that went along with what happened to me in 2020. Um, you know, it had been a while since I had been in victory lane of any kind. 
uh, won anything, um, and uh, that was really special to be in the SRX series, and win amongst the best drivers in the world, uh, at a place I'd never been to, and uh, having my daughters there to stand on top of the car and celebrate was as special as, about as special as you can get. Talk about going from the, the, I mean, true racers, I guess, don't count their chickens before the hatched. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you're the kind of guy that says, man, I'm about to win the Daytona 500 again, but if you are, you go from the highs to highs. I'm coming to the checkered flag to, yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't remember any of that. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't exist. So. Have you watched any of it on I'll watch video? it, but it doesn't tell us. There's nothing there. Like, it's deleted. When you, when you watch it, what are your thoughts? I was close. <laughs> that was it. You know what I mean? Like, don't know that anybody did anything wrong. Just circumstantial, circumstantial, circumstantial crash. And, um, you know, I don't remember anything. So, it's, it's pretty tough, but. I mean, I was close, but counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. That's not what I was doing. 2020, boy, what a year. And then, uh, you know, 2021, did you really think, you know, that's it? I'm just going to go fishing, sprint car racing? No, I wanted to keep racing. I've always said, okay, that's, and that's why there was no announcement of a retirement, because retirement says I'm quitting. I'm not quitting. I'm just not doing what I was doing. So I'm happy to be in the SRX series with Camping World, Sun Outdoors, and all the, everybody that makes this happen. It's really special to be a part of. And, um, to be racing on dirt at a short track is uh, you know, bucket bucket list material anyway. So we're having fun. Some guys, you know what you call it, take a step back or whatever, go back to the truck series, go back to the Xfinity series, whatever you want to call it. Have you considered that? Or you have cup offers again? Uh, I, I wouldn't do anything unless I felt like I was in top-notch equipment. And that, that phone call didn't come, and that's fine. Uh, but this phone call came, and this, this is why we're here. I mean, I've got some other opportunities racing modifieds and midgets and things like that, Silver Crown cars, but I haven't done a lot of anything consistent, and that's fine. There's a, a lot of point swing tonight, you know, considering the heats and the, uh, the race. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? I just got to win. I mean, that's, that's like anything else. Um, I lost an IROC championship, I think, by a point or two by not winning. So we just got to win, and uh, that'll take care of itself. Speaking of well, IROC. I mean, I shouldn't say it could take care of itself. Marco could have a good night, too, or Bobby Lynn, for that matter. But, so, you know, ultimately, I just want to go out there and have fun and let the points fall as they may. That's, that's what happened in the first five races. They put us in a hunt. We're still in a hunt. Let's see what happens at the end of that. And tonight. You're talking about being in the IROC series. Uh, interviewed Frank Kimmel a couple months ago. He said you told him at Daytona, uh, right before the IROC race, now just wait, I'm going to knock this out of you. And he said, boy, he he said, I've never been hit, hit so hard in my life. <laughs> I remember that, Dallas, you say that. Yeah, that was um, it's what, it's what you kind of had to do at times. I mean, you had to, you know, take the runs, and if the guy was in front of you, you, you gave him the run and then helped that he sucked you along with him. So we did do that. But you can't really do that in these cars, though, right? No, no, especially here. There's no draft. There's, I mean, that was all drafting. There's no drafting. But nothing that we do in the SRX series so far has been drafting. Do you think the SRX series maybe needs an intermediate, one intermediate? No. Maybe a road course? No. Tony's talking about maybe a shorter course, maybe? No. My, my personal opinion is keep it on short tracks. Maybe a street course? Have less aero No, street courses. No, that's, <laughs> no. No, those other guys can go do street courses. <laughs> Appreciate you being on the show. Yeah. Thank you.
you got two spots out Yeah. Her whole race is right there. Yeah, I know. He went, okay, yeah, after the race? No. Oh, yeah, I saw it, yeah. Six to go? Yeah, it was scary. Like, like that? And then, but then he let off. He's, I think he realized, oh, he is racing right now. <laughs> Maybe it was eight to go or something. Well, no, I, honestly, you were way good. When we went in there, I was like, oh, he missed the bottom. And I was like, great. And I was like, oh, he slides me. And then I was like, I was like, I was like, duh, we're on dirt. He's throwing. It took me a second. Once I realized that's what you were doing, I stopped. Yeah, I got turned down, and then got me stuck in, and then got on the ground. You were way. I tried. I tried to not just go straight across the face. No, you were way. If I had recognized that that's what you were doing. We talked earlier, and I was saying how calm and cool you looked. And during the race, what happened? <laughs> it, we won a championship. You, you did, you did. <laughs> no, I, I overdrove. I wanted it too bad. I drove too desperate in the beginning. Then at the end, it was just to try to just keep him in sight. I got caught up there in the end. Um, so at least the, the one wasn't my fault. Do yeah. you, you ever feel like you had nine lives, maybe? Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, the beauty of this series is they let you stay in the lead lap when that stuff happens. So um, we just kept kept fighting. I mean, that was the talk before the race. Just keep fighting. And I, at the end, I tried not to let him uh, out of my sight. And Adam said uh, earlier when we spoke, he said, you know, this would be really important to the family. Uh, how does that, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it means a lot to have him here and support and uh, you know, definitely. Uh, family affair that's for sure but how about the wrist uh, when did you do that this one actually wasn't my fault it, it, uh, <laughs> I was just trying to miss whoever crashed in front of me there at the end um, and I couldn't get it stopped and then my wrist was in the wheel when the wheel spun on me so um, it was clicking for the last few laps so I'm in some pain